hello guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a top 10 something i've not done in a while i went through a phase of just doing top 10s on my channel but i haven't done them for a while not because i've run out of ideas just because i want to sort of slow them down i've been so caught up in doing movie reviews that I, i've just sort of like um i forget about them because i just think oh yeah i must review that film or I've watched that film, I must do a review of that, you know, that sort of thing. So I kind of get sidetracked quite a bit. But we're going to return to a top 10 today. And we're returning to my, one of my favourite sub-genres of horror. You know my favourite is witchcraft. So this sort of go goes inside, it's it's it's, it's, um, it's ugly twin sister, if you like. And it's folk horror. So I'm going to go through my top 10 favourite Folk horror films. Now, folk horror is a, it's not really a new um, subgenre, but it's or like not really been described um, as folk horror until there was a documentary out a few years ago by Mac, Mark Gattis called The History of Horror. And he, he did a whole documentary on um, pretty much British horror films. And he described them as folk horror. And since then, a sort of class of horror has sort of um, formed from it. And there was a trilogy of films that are supposedly been the trilogy that started the, uh, the well, not started the folk horror, but started the, the classic three to have in the folk horror collection. And they are obviously... Uh, your, your English ones, your, your Blood of Satan's Claw, your Wicker Man's, and your uh, um, Witch Finder General. They were called the Unholy Trilogy. Now, a folk horror film has to have certain sort of things in it to be classed as folk horror. Um, they have to be set in rural places, like a village or a small town where the town folk are a little bit cut off from the rest of the sort of like nation or world almost, and they're completely different, maybe still sort of uh, running their life sort of in a different time era, a bit like um, Paranormal Activity, the last one, which was like a, a sort of Quaker village. It, that could be classed and is a folk horror. So it has to have something like that. And also something to do around the country's sort of folklore. So films like Troll Hunter, you could class as a folk horror because it's based around folklore of trolls in, in Norway. So, so it's based around their sort of... Um, their, 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 their folklore. And it has to have sort of like a... A storyline where the local villagers believe in something that no one else in the sort of uh, planet really believes in. So they're sort of like really cut off. Um, and a lot of um, folk horror films are based to ingredients, witchcraft or paganism. They're another two major um, sort of um, aspects that you'll find in most most folklore films but i think if you've got one or two of those things in there you can be classed as a folklore film so like my i've got one honorable mention which i'm going to honorable mention today as a folk horror film and that is uh the texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> and you're thinking what well, that's a that's a deranged family cannibals yes but it's set in a rural area where all the local people are a little bit different and cut off, aren't they, from the rest of the way the world are. They're all sort of like a little bit... Um, don't like outsiders. That They don't like that sort of... Uh, that sort of... Um, generational sort of thing, or people coming into their area. They look at it as an invasion. A little bit like um, the folk horror film I reviewed not so long ago on my channel called Deliverance, which was also based in America. Um, that was like a, a hillbilly kind of area where the local hillbillies didn't like outsiders coming in. And then you had these three city guys coming in, and so that created uh, um, havoc. And most of these folk horror films always end in some sort of violent and brutal way. 
um, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So yes, that to me is a folk horror film um, because it's based on probably American folklore. I mean, not all folklore is, is British. There's a, most, most folklore is actually from Europe. And so that's why in this, there's quite a few European films in there. Um, but I will give a shout out for a few more films that I haven't included or picked out. Um, the Blair Witch, obviously that's fa based on the folklore. That's based on the folk of that local area that believe in this witch. And these film documentaries go in there to try and, and sort of like um, look into that in the woods. So that is a folk horror film. Um, you could even probably class um, Night of the Living Dead. I know it's a zombie film, but you could class it as sort of folklore sort of film or folk horror. Because, again, it's all based around this little house and this little towns and, and the sort of people around there. Are all sort of out there sort of killing zombies and actually end up killing the people. Um, so it's a form of folk horror. Um, and that's what how sort of diverse the sort of thing is. But I try to stick to ones that are really obvious sort of folk horror that you think yeah i could see why that's a, a folk horror film because also an important part to me in, in a good folk horror film is the music um i like the music to be quite folky there is some folk music on texas chainsaw massacre playing on the radio and stuff like this and so you you, you know it's not our folk music but it's american folk music with banjos and things like that so it's their kind of music a bit like um uh, deliverance that's folk music that's american folk music you know american folk music over there a lot of it's probably called country music but it's their folk music but anyway wasting time let's get on to the top 10 number one is a british film called kill list now this is a really cool film uh, i've not watched it for a while it's about these these two criminal guys and and their wives who live in this suburban area and their wives are involved with like this occult sort of like um group of occult people and the husbands don't really know about it they sort of fathom it out through the film and sort of like all sort of things of sacrifices are all made in it and that's another thing that folk horror films tend to have is a sacrifice um or monuments of sacrifices you know what i mean sort of something that they sort of worship um, so yeah, this is a fantastic film, Kill List. I must revisit this and maybe um, give it a good review on my channel. But that's number ten. Number nine, I believe, is a Spanish film um, called A Mark of the Devil. Now this is based in the sort of medieval times in in Europe, about sort of like uh, witchcraft and a little bit like witch hunters, and they're sort of like accusing women and, and men and going about their way to sort of like just to um sort of like expose them as heretics and as witches and to execute them it's a very gruesome film video nasty i believe um but yeah it's a really really cool film um very similar to witch finder general it's more, almost like europe's version of witch finder general so the mark of the devil is number nine Number eight is a, is a recent film uh, made by Mark Jenkins. Not come out too long ago, actually. And it's called Any's Men. This is based in Cornwall. And it's just based on this like this little um, like this little island, I believe, off Cornwall. With like a lighthouse on it. And this woman uh, lives on there. And she's experiencing all these sort of like visions. And sort of like horrific things that have happened in this area all based around this kind of stones and rock and earth of, of where she is and again so again it's it's based around the area of the planet so nature is is the folk horror in this film and it sort of haunts her and and the sort of story sort of takes a while to build up because she's working near some sort of scientist uh doing experiments on on the earth's temperature and things like this and all sorts of strange little things happen. Very, very subtle, but very sort of like um, mm, unsettling. And it's a really cool film. Very um, 
small script. It's not well scripted because it, it's pretty much her on her own. But it's definitely worth watching if you want to see something a little bit different. But Ennis Men, really cool film. And that is my eighth favourite folk horror film. Number seven, we're off to Australia. Uh, to a film that I've already reviewed on my channel. And that's Picnic at Hanging Rock. Really cool film. Uh, based about in the Victorian times in Australia. When it was becoming like a new country. These girls from this school go out on a picnic to a place called Hanging Rock. And the Hanging Rock's got some sort of history. And some of the girls go missing. And it's then a hunt on for these girls to find out what's happened to them. Um, so again, it's all based on the folklore of this rock and of obviously the weather and of the nature and of the actual environment itself, the rocks and stuff. So it's a very awesome film. Absolutely love this film. And it's, it's going to be definitely in one of my uh, top 10 favourite releases of this year. Um, but yeah, really cool film, really eerie and mysterious film. And absolutely oodles of sort of folk history in there. Um, and the soundtrack is magnificent. It's the only thing I wish was in here was the soundtrack. Number seven. Number six is another one that's quite recent. Um, I think it's an American made movie, but not not based in America. And it's called Mid Midsommar. Um, this is about these, I think, American... Um, Go go to I think it's Sweden to discover this area which is run by this sort of cult sort of um village people not village people village for the people that like this sort of cult and they have this sort of really um strange way of living it's very much like the Wicker Man really you know with sort of sacrifices and sort of like underlying darkness to this 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 town that all that these people that seem to come so wonderful and great but it's an underlying darkness about them uh, you need to watch that and find out that will be reviewed on my channel again while i've been going through all oh, what films so i put in here i've discovered some films i haven't reviewed yet um so i will review this one on my channel a really cool folk horror film uh mid really cool Watch it if you get a chance. Or watch my review when it comes out. So, what are we down to? Top five. These are obvious now, really. Well, sort of. Number five is the first film in the Unholy Trilogy. And it's Witchfinder General, starring Vincent Price. This is based on a true story of Matthew Hopkins, who was a witchfinder in Britain in the 1600s. And he just tortured anyone that he thought was a witch to get them to some, to finally... They tortured them so much to the point where they'll just say yes to anything just to stop it. And then they'd, they'd get executed. So he was a very evil man. And it, most of the people were innocent, you know. And it's all based around little villages around in England. Because this was set during the Civil War um, of Cromwell's army and the Royalists. And so, while that was going on, these sort of people sort of um, haunted and sort of like went from village to village claiming all these people were witches and stuff like that because they didn't believe in the sort of religions that were that you were supposed to believe in. And so, they would go around and sort of like accuse everyone of witches. Again, it's another very brutal film. Nowhere near as brutal as Mark of the Devil but it still has some moments of high brutality and some sort of like, uh, you know, women getting hit and stuff like that. So it's quite a difficult watch and it is pretty gory as well. Number five, great movie though. Number four is a fantastic witchcraft film uh, based in Germany. It's a German film, but I believe based in the Austrian Alps and it's called Hagazusa. Again, I have reviewed this on my channel. It's an amazing film. Uh, about these two witches that live in the mountains of the uh, the Alps uh, by a small village, and they get tormented by the local villagers, and th then the elder of the witch uh, dies, and the young's left on her own, but she's got a baby, and she's trying to bring this baby up, and all these really 
horrible things sort of happen. There's sacrifices in it. There's um, she sort of puts spells and curses on the people of the village and stuff like that. So it's it's all beautifully shot in an amazing environment of woodlands and hills and mountains of Austria. It's a stunning film, and it's a really cool sort of folk horror film, again, with very little dialogue. Not that you need a lot of dialogue in it. The sort of story sort of tells itself, really. Amazing film. Really underrated. Hagazuza is in at my number four. Number three is the, 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 uh, the second film, in the Unholy Trilogy, and it's Blood on Satan's Claw, which is an amazing film, another British horror film, made like in the, I think this was early 70s, this was well, maybe 1970, something like that, and this is based around a little village in England, that um, the, the children of the village sort of find a claw in the ground, and they believe to be Satan's claw, and they become sort of almost... Satanists sort of worshipping him and they have in in the woodlands area they, they tend to have these little ceremonies where they sort of sacrifice uh other, other children or a children gets raped and and all, all all the adults are trying to find out what's going on it's a very very strange story but it's a superb film really really well acted absolutely love this film again another really underrated british classic movie but that is my third favorite folk horror film number two is a shocker because it's my favorite witchcraft film but it's in at number two and it's the witch um absolutely incredible film it, it it's just one of those films that has blown me away from the first time i've seen it i've seen this about 10 times now this is based in america in new england uh about a family that had been outcast from a, a town so they go out on their own to start a farm on their own to make themselves self-sufficient. Uh, but the, unfortunately, the area they, they've chosen uh, is in the area where a witch lives. And she's cursed the land. And they cannot grow crops. They cannot farm properly. And in the end, they start arguing with each other. Some go missing and some come back haunted by the witch and possessed by the witch. And... It's and and it's just a breakdown of a family, um, and then they all end up turning on each other pretty much uh, because of the spells and the curses on the land, and and the witch that lives in the area. So it's a very scary, haunting film, and it's my favourite witch film of all time. But it's my second favourite folk horror film. So that means the only one could only ever ever be really the British classic. The Wicker Man. It's the greatest folk horror film I think ever made. Because it was made at the right time. You know what I mean? It was made at the right time. It was made at a time in Britain, 1973. When it was sort of like a... The music was very folk orientated in, in Britain at that time. And this really plays on it. Because this plays out almost like a musical because it has a lot of sort of folk music in there, a lot of singing and stuff, and stuff like that, and they break into song quite often. But this is because it's based on a small little island called Summer Isle, which is owned by Lord Summer Isle, play, played by Christopher Lee. Now, there's supposed to be a young girl there um, called Rowan that's gone missing. And a policeman from the Scottish mainland has come over to investigate the missing girl he's played by edward woodward and he sort of discovers the island secret of their sort of pagan paganism sort of beliefs and sort of um celebrational things like with maypoles and and their sort of ceremonies they do to get a good crops and good harvest um, because they're a self-sufficient island so that they, they've all become engrossed by this religion that they feel that this is the only way they're going to, you know, to uh, to be self-sufficient, to so they can get good crops and animals and fish from the sea and everything like that. So they are, and so they all believe in this religion that it is the uh, um, the way to live. And it's a very sort of sexual orientated sort of film as well because 
they're all sort of ambiguous and stuff. They don't mind doing it out in front of each other in the middle of a field and at night and stuff like that. And it's it's quite um, haunting and eerie and scary in places. And then it's got one of the most ultimate endings of any horror film. So it's it's a classic British folk horror film. And it's the best film that I've ever seen in the uh, folk horror genre. And that's it. That is my top 10 favourite folk horror movies. What is yours? Let me know down below what you what your favourites are. Recommend some to me if there's any I've left out. I've probably seen them or got them. There's films like Black Death and that with, um, uh, what's his name? That Sean guy. Um, about they go to this village. Uh, the Black Death has taken over the country apart from this one village. Um, that's another really good folk sort of horror film. But I can only fit 10 in 10. And that is my favourite. Anyway, guys, till my next video, check out some horror channels for me. Check out Horror Hands, The Horror Geek, Man V Film, Iris Designs, Pizzawell, I'm the Ice Lord, Cat Watches Horror Movies, and Grumpy Andrew's Haunted House. And a massive shout out to my lad, Lemon Lord. Till next time, look after yourselves, look after one another, and I really hope I'll see you all soon.